Chelsea being relegated is now a distinct and real possibility. In the most heartbreaking news possible, there is now a genuine threat that Chelsea could be slung out of the Premier League because a precedent has been set. The Everton news must have sent shockwaves through everyone associated with Chelsea. As a fan, obviously, the WhatsApp group was popping off. As soon as you see what happened to Everton Football Club, the reality of what could happen to Chelsea, if Chelsea are charged and found guilty, really does become apparent. I imagine it sent shockwaves through the boardroom. They will obviously be monitoring it very closely. And the players, the players must be deeply concerned by this. Some of those players were on very long contracts at Chelsea, and I imagine none of them envisaged the prospect where they would be playing against Queen's Park Rangers in a year's time. So there is a concern, there is a worry, and yes, we have spoken about this before. The threat of relegation has been there before, but it never felt real. It always felt like hyperbole. It never felt like a genuine possibility. Whereas now, I think there is a true sense that this could happen. I mean, the fact that Everton have had 10 Premier League points deducted from their tally for a straightforward FFP breach. Look, that to me does feel harsh. For a straightforward FFP breach, it, it doesn't feel fair. But Everton did gain a sporting advantage over four years and therefore they have been punished. Everton fans seem to feel very hard done by, but they gained a sporting advantage. If you read the paperwork, that's what it says. They gained a sporting advantage. Therefore, there has to be some sort of punishment. I think Everton fans could feel quite fortunate that it's fallen and the punishment has befallen them on a season where they're going to survive easily. You know, you subtract 10 points from their tally and they're still going to finish 10 points away from the relegation zone this year. So ultimately for Everton, I feel like it's not quite the end of the world. Whereas if Chelsea end up being relegated. And if you think about 10 points for a, a simple FFP breach, compare that to what Chelsea have been accused of and the paperwork that the Guardian have come up with. You know, the Guardian have put together this, this deep dive into Chelsea's financial situation and have claimed that Abramovich used offshore companies to make payments for the club. Now, if that is proved guilty, considering that... Considering that... Uh, an FFP breach means 10 points. I don't see how Chelsea could end up staying in the league. And you can extrapolate that to be relevant to Manchester City. If Manchester City are found guilty of 115 charges, or even less, say they're not found guilty of all of them, they say they're found guilty of half of them. Again, I feel like Manchester City won't be able to survive in the Premier League. They will be stripped of their opportunity to play in the Premier League. So I think this is now a real concern. And, and it's a heartbreaker because... I. I don't really understand this. And correct me if I'm wrong, maybe not everybody's been exposed to this, but I find that the championship and the prospect of being relegated is often romanticised, it's often cleaned up, it's often fantasised about in a way that just isn't true. People go, oh, it'll be great. And they find positives for going down. For example, people go, well, if you were to be relegated, you would shed the glory hunters. And if you're a you know, match going home and away fan, you get to try out all these new grounds. And look, I do understand that there is a bonus to that, but you'd rather do it in a cup, wouldn't you? You'd rather go to Carlisle in the cup than the league. So the prospect of Chelsea going down could irreparably damage Chelsea. We could go down if it were to happen. And there is a chance that you never come back up. So this needs to be fought at every angle. And what we must remember is that this entire issue stems from a series of payments connected to Abramovich. This isn't a Clear Lake issue. This isn't a Todd Bowley issue. You know, I believe that Todd Bowley has done as much as he can. I believe that Clear Lake have been as transparent as they can, but they don't have access to the paperwork. So I don't really know how we're going to proceed here. But if it does end up proving to be true, we will have unquestionably gained a sporting advantage from such behaviour and a punishment fitting for the crime can only be relegation, and that will be heartbreaking. I'm terribly sorry to interrupt this video, but I have some fantastic news for you. Trust me, you want to hear this. What I am offering you here is some free beer for Christmas. That's right, you did hear me correctly. I have some free beers for this Christmas 
for you. I am thrilled to tell you that I am working with Beer 52 again. Beer 52 have partnered with me on this video and they are genuinely one of my favorite brands. Who wouldn't love it? Booze, and not just any booze. I am so tired of bland, big brand lager. What I want is some hoppy, some delicious, some original beers that you just don't find in the supermarket. For example, craft beer giants Omnipolo's Outer Galactic is a smooth and super drinkable pale ale with a vibrant hot profile and a beautifully rounded palate to ensure you keep coming back for more. That smells delicious. Mm. Exquisite. So to get eight totally free, brilliant craft beers, all you need to do is go to www.beer52.com forward slash Jennings and cover just £5.95 postage. That's right. So for less than six quid, simply paying the postage, you will receive eight beautifully sourced, incredibly tasty craft beers. This is a wonderful Christmas gift to one of your mates or to yourself. Everybody deserves a nice drink at Christmas, don't they? Go on, treat yourself. Trust me, it is worth it. And to make things even better, you get a few tasty treats in the box and Ferment Magazine. It's a fantastic magazine of beer, culture and adventures in craft alcohol. Educational and tasty, all in the same package. You are welcome. Right, we're going back into the video now, but remember, all you need to do is head over to www.beer52.com forward slash Jennings and cover just £5.95 to receive eight different craft ales. Enjoy. Like the whole thing is just a nightmare. And if it were to happen, if this were to go as badly as it possibly could, I just don't know what will become of us. Like presumably, we'd fight it through the courts. Presumably, we would have some sort of angle to suggest that relegation isn't the only answer. Surely a fine would suffice. But then people argue that you can, when you are incredibly wealthy, you can break the rules and factor in a fine into your spending, into your budget, into the manoeuvre that you make and just kind of take that as part of the issue. Take that as part of the cost of running the club. So the only way that you can hit a club where it hurts really is to do something drastic, such as relegation. But it will cause such an issue. And... Imagine if it is Chelsea and Manchester City. You know, Manchester City, actually, they have, a, a, they have a, a track record of demonstrating a robust approach through the courts, don't they? You know, they, they challenged UEFA and actually managed to overturn a two-year ban, didn't they? Via the court of arbitration they went to, if I remember rightly. So Manchester City certainly have a precedent here, but this is just a nightmare because if you think about the ramifications of this, if you think about what this means for football, you can actually argue that the stakes for English football have never been higher here. Just imagine if Chelsea are found guilty of this. Not only does it affect Chelsea, maybe in a two seasons time going to play in the championship, but what if Chelsea benefited from previous seasons when we have been doped effectively? So for example, let's use Everton here because they've actually been charged, right? In theory, clubs that were relegated instead of Everton. So let's use who? Leeds United, Leicester City. They went down when Everton were benefiting from their lack of compliance to financial fair play. Does that mean that Leicester City, Leeds United, Southampton, Burnley could all potentially sue Everton because they went down? We saw something like this before, didn't we, with West Ham and Sheffield United? Imagine if Chelsea and West Ham were to end up, uh, sorry, imagine if Chelsea and Manchester City were to end up being charged. What does that mean for the trophies that Chelsea have won? For, would, would certain clubs have a, have a right to sue Chelsea because we won silverware that they didn't or we qualified for European competition that they didn't? With regard to Manchester City, did Manchester United actually win the FA Cup last year? It feels like it's just... A mess. And this kind of thing with regard to football, I don't know if anybody empathises with this. We obviously love football. We obviously revolve our life around the beautiful game. Playing football, watching football, talking about football, being football. It's who we are. But so much football now, we're just bogged down in this sort of stuff. It's 
basically gives you a migraine, doesn't it? You want to talk about football. You want to talk about brilliant goals and wonderful performances and how good was Phil Foden last night. You know, I was at Wembley last night. I went to the England game and watching Phil Foden play was a joy. Watching him stroke the ball around, his first touch, magnificent. Watching Cole Palmer come on for his first England cap and I'm there and I'm cheering him on. It was amazing. Even in a more negative way, do we want to talk about Marcus Rashford's performance? Do we want to explore whether he should go? Football chat. And yet somehow we're here talking about the European Court of Arbitration. We're here talking about financial fair play. We're here talking about Roman Abramovich potentially signing Samuel Eto'o and behaving in a way using offshore companies to make payments on behalf of the club. It just doesn't feel like football. But to be totally honest, it will just be a complete and utter disaster. And the thought of Chelsea ending up being relegated, trying to start a game, what it will mean for the finances of the club, there will be an exodus, won't there, of players. Like, realistically, who hangs about? James? I believe Reese James will stay. I'd like to think Cole Palmer. Thiago Silva, I love. <laughs> but not many. Ah, oh dear. <laughs> it's just a, just a nightmare, isn't it? I don't even know what to say. Genuinely, genuinely heartbroken. Fingers crossed. This resolves, but I don't even know what the answer is. Painful. 